party people hi it's randy for thunder horse descendant i'm here today and i got um a cool project that we discussed on morning coffee on youtube so if you're not part of our morning coffee group i invite you to come and experience morning coffee uh it's pretty fun we discuss designs and different stuff, so we have a nice community over there. Starts uh, at 9 a.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Everyone is welcome, so I invite you to come to that. Uh, on Morning Coffee, we discussed the bargain bead box for July. So I am a slightly behind for July because I had went on vacation. And I'm back. We had uh, designed up two projects, and I think we're going to use all of the beads. So, if you just saw today, Saturday, I think it was Saturday, I posted uh, the new bargain bead box for August. I posted a little on-the-fly project. I will link that uh, in the cards and down in the description box below, so if you want to check that out, you can. Um, but I still have this one, the blue one. So that's what we're going to work with today. Let's get on down to the mat and get this party started. All right, guys, here we are down on the mat. And this is the little design that we designed up on morning coffee. So we're going to do some wire wrapping with some links here using these guys and the beads. We're going to try to make some fringe with the wire and utilizing these little clamshells. Um, going to deck up our pendant a little bit. Looking at our um, design, what I want to do first is I want to, number one, prep the pendant. We said we were going to put a few charms on the pendant. And also I want to make the um, little fringe here. So we're going to make one, two, three, four for each side. That's eight fringe. <clears throat> For our fringe, we're going to need two, one, two, so we got, we need 16 of these, two, four, six, eight, yeah, 16, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, 15, 16. So it looks like we're going to have enough. So that is good. So first thing we'll do is prep the pendant and then we'll move on to prepping the fringe. Alright guys, so to prep our pendant, what we're going to do is we are going to flip it over. And this pendant, as you can see through the back here, it already has holes in it. We just want to just improve on these holes a little bit. So I want to put five dangles from this pendant. So I'm going to start right smack dab in the middle where there already is a... is a hole. I'm just making it more pronounced so that I can see it. Um, so I am using my 1.5 millimeter hole um, Euro punch, metal punch. So now I'm going to move over here. There's a little triangle. I am going to punch that. I'm going to move to the other side in the other triangle. And I'm going to punch that. So we got three in there. Right here you can see there is, I'm going to zoom you in, there is like a little uh, umbrella looking thing, like a weird T. I'm going to cut, I'm going to punch that just in the middle. Go to the other side and punch the same one. There we go. Not that these really needed punching, but um, I just prefer that the hole be the same so that when we're putting dangles on, they'll hang, you know, remotely the same way. So now, what we got to do is they have provided us with some jump rings. I hope that these are going to be big enough. 
we shall check. Where did I put my tools? That's a good question. We're going to wind up just a few of these little guys. One, two, three, four, five. So we did have one charm here. Where did that charm go? We got one charm. Maybe we'll put him in the middle and do four of the wind charms. So in order to do that, I'm just going to put him onto my jump ring. Go through the center loop. And just tighten him up. So those ones are going to work really well. So I am going to grab some um, small silver head pins. And we will wind up the bicones. Here is some silver head pins. I'm going to use these little guys. So I get these little guys at um, Taylor's Falls Beads store. They're about $4.99 a pack. And they have a very small ball on them. And um, you get a hundred in the pack and they're small enough to put charm, um, sorry, pearls on. So if anybody is interested, I can grab up some of those from the store. All right. And then we will just wire wrap these. I'll zoom in. So instead of put my one bead on there, I'm going to go with my round nose plier. Going to do a wire wrapped loop. I'm going to bend it, bring it over the top, spin your plier, and wire wrap. Got about three wraps on there. very carefully tuck this little tail in there we go so there's one i'm gonna wind up the rest all right now that i got those going i'm going to just put these onto the pendant with my larger eight millimeter oval jump rings and Just going to put those on there. And then we'll be all prepped for our pendant portion of this necklace. All right, so now um, they do not provide any bail for this, and I, I might put a jump ring on there, but because we're going to do some different types of skills today, I'm just going to leave it for now. If we need it, we'll put it on. We might just wire wrap directly to the pendant, so I'm just going to leave it for now. But anyways, our pendant's looking spiffy. So to do the fringe, what we're going to do is we're going to get this... Uh, wire they sent along. Now, I don't have my sheet down here, but I, I remember this being a thicker gauge wire. Um, so, let's just take a look-see here. And, okay. So my idea with this is that we are going to cut off a little snippet of the wire and we're going to bend it. I'm going to cut eight of these. Now we are going to trim them. So I'm not really concerned at this point as I'm cutting, like, you know, I'm just kind of cutting them a certain 
length. So now they've provided these um, jump rings and these larger crimp tubes. And I don't know if the larger crimp tubes are going to work on the ends, but we are in fact going to use them on the top here. So this is my idea. Let me zoom you in so you can see. Now we're just prepping these as fringe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a jump ring, put it on. We're gonna take a crimp tube and put that on the both ends to crimp these together. So we're gonna bring it up. Now we wouldn't necessarily have to crimp them. We could just use a bead to get this to stay in place, but I mean, we're about to find out what these are really do in here. Okay, so these are these are slightly problematic, <laughs> but it is what it is. We're getting it all curled up on top of itself here, so it looks nice. And then. I'm going to use some of the beads that we have and I'm going to use these little um, gold ones as the charms that are hanging down. So I'm not going to use those. What I am going to use is probably the silver um, spacer beads and some of these smaller um, Goldstone. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And these might be too big for this part. I feel like they're a little big, but we're going to try it. They're quite big. Okay, let me use... Let me just use some crimp beads for this bottom portion. Because... Those ones are big. We can use those for the top of these fringe, but the bottom I think is going to be a little iffy. So, now I'm going to put on the crimp bead, and I'm going to do a flat crimp. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to do a flat crimp right here. On that crimp bead. I'm going to do a little pull test seems good all right and then I'm gonna trim that off and I'm gonna close up the clamshell can just do that with your fingers because they are very lightweight I do want this to line up Okay. All right. So far, so good. Now, I think on this other side of the fringe, I will do one of the silver and one of these little bicones. I will do the little clam shell.
the crimp bead. And I'm going to go in here with a flat crimp. So I'm going to try to show you this so you can see. I don't want it to be right up against tight. I want it to have at least a couple millimeters to, you know, fringe. <laughs> so I'm going to squish and make sure I really get it squished good. I'm going to do the pull test. I'm going to trim pretty dang close because I want whatever excess to fit in this shell close down over that. Okay. So now this is what I have. Okay, now I'm going to grab two ball head pins. And I'm going to twist up two little charms for this. Bargain bead box making me work for it today. <laughs> Alrighty. So, just doing a wrapped loop here. And I'm going to go again with the second one. Now, I'm going to connect on my charms. I don't want to use that great big um, oval or that great big of a loop there. So let me see if I have some smaller four millimeters. These are four millimeters. So now I'm just going to put that on the jump ring and I'm going to pick up my fringe and I'm going to go through this hole, making sure I go through both of these. All right, one piece of fringe done. I think these are gonna be cute after we get them all completed. Um, I'm gonna do one more with you guys so you can see it, and then I will make the rest of them off camera because we do have eight to make, uh, and then we'll move into the next portion. So one more time on the fringe. Here's what we got. We've got piece of wire that we've cut. We're going to take one of the jump rings they've provided, put it on there. Bring that down to the pointy end. We're going to take one of the larger um, crimps they've provided, put that on both ends, bring it down. And I am leaving a little space here, um, not snugging it right up to I'm not snugging it right up to the oval. Um, and then I am going to crimp. Now, what I found with this is that 
things. You almost have to go around like three times. But okay, that's fine. As long as it's uh, looking good here and nothing is poking out and it is stable, I am not worried about it. Then we go on with our beading. Now, you can make all your fringe the same. I think I will make all of my fringe the same. So I'm doing one, two silver spacers and one of the smaller. These are not the English cut. These are the faceted bluestone. And then I am doing the clamshell. with my own crimp bead and I'm flat crimping inside of there again leaving it enough space to have a little breathing room making sure it is tightly crimped doing the pull test and then trimming very closely and folding the clam shell, shell over with my finger. So that is that side. On the next side, I have one silver bead and one topaz looking bicone, a clam shell, a crimp bead, And then the same process. Then I have two wound up charms on the end. So, I mean, you could pick whatever charms you want. Um, I just thought I would use these little bicone beads. And so, I just am going to wind those up. One, And two. <clears throat> and then I'm using my own four millimeter oval jump rings. I'm sorry, round jump rings to attach these onto the fringe. Well, there we go. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? Um, all right, so there we have two French. So now I'm going to jump off camera here and we are going to make a total of eight French. Okay. So I will be right back. 
Alrighty. I was in debate about doing a front toggle clasp. I still am in debate about it. So, it was originally, on the original design, it was going to be a back toggle. I might keep that. We're going to see how it goes. But I got all my fringe done. All the fringe is made. Four for each side. And now, I'm going to move into constructing the wire wrapped portion. So I'm going to use 20 gauge artistic wire for this. <clears throat> and to do this is pretty simple. Move down a little bit here. And I'm just going to start a loop. And before I start to finish off my loop, I'm going to take some of our connectors and I'm going to go wire wrap directly on to this side of the connector. So I'm going to get a hold of that and just wrap around probably three times. Give it a little trim and tuck that in. So now, building this necklace up, it's kind of at your discretion what beads you want to use. I am going to use mixture of beads and also... I'm also going to use, like I might make some longer links and then some shorter links. So for this one, I'm going to go with the English cut, then uh, one of the silver spacers. I'm going to put on one of my dangles, one of the fringe. So this is how I'm getting the fringe to stay in place while doing it on wire wrapped links <clears throat> excuse me so i'm gonna put two beads here and as long as the the jump ring doesn't go over the top of the beads we should be good to go okay so this is a an example of a longer link that i'm gonna make i want to make a few and see where we're at because um I want to make sure that my fringe is going to space accordingly, you know. So I'm going to put on a connector. Get a hold of that link, ring. So, this is going to go near the pendant, but I'm still, I'm in debate here if I might add a, just a smaller link, a bead link here, because I don't want it falling down on the pendant. So I gotta, gotta kind of see how that's going to work out, but I'm going to do another one of these just for, to see where I'm at. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, I'm going with the 20 gauge. Um, 20 gauge wire. And... I'm 
I'm going to connect it onto this one. We'll see what happens here. I'm thinking... <clears throat> I might make a smaller one here. Oh, I hear Jake toes. So, for this one... I think I might do crystal. I don't know if I want to do the same pattern. I'll do a crystal and then a fringe. How's that going to hang? Oh, yeah, that's all right. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do another crystal. And just put that between those two. Yeah, it looks okay. Just trying to be careful there, tucking that in, in between those crystals. <clears throat> and then I think I will do this one again. Or actually, maybe since we're tapering, well, I have to do at least two beads. And I got four fringe on. But I could... Connect this one here and this one here. Oh, yeah. Let me connect those on and see how that looks. See if that's something I like. Let me get you down there so you can see. So since these two are between the beads. This one I'm thinking, what if we put it on this link right here? I want to see if they're all going to bump into each other or, you know, what the situation is. Hmm. No, I actually think that's going to be good. Okay. So then I will put this, this fourth one, the fourth fringe, I will put that onto this link. In this hole that's hanging down. And then... I'm going to make one more link for this end. And I'm only going to do one bead. So it's basically like a long two little crystals and then one. I think that will look good. Um, I think maybe I will use that metal bead since we only have a few of those. That'll probably be good. This one, the one single metal bead. It's a little tight down there.
Okay. So that is what I have so far. I'm pretty happy with this. Because this is going to be going down towards... Let me move some of this out of the way. Going down towards the pendant. Like so. Like that. So I like that. I like this fringe. Here's our original design. So we got it going up here. And so I think what I will do is I'm just going to repeat these links as we go up the top now. And um, I just won't have fringe on those. I'm just going to repeat those to the top. And then once we come to back down here to the bottom, I'm going to assess do I want to do a couple of links just linked together leading into this pendant, which I, I honestly think I probably will, but we will see how it goes. That down here at the bottom I want to go in with another link and I'm just going to use an oval jump ring for that I do have well, I have a smaller size I want to see if those will work uh, I don't know if they will but we're gonna try it Oh yeah, it will. I got to put this in. Got everything twisted up. <laughs> Hold on. What I'm looking for for what is up and what is down are what where these guys are hanging. So those have to be facing down. The rest of this can be maneuvered, but those little flower links there need to be facing down. So <clears throat> now that I got it situated. And I am down here. I'm thinking that I'm going to connect one more link and make sure I have enough. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I have enough, so I'm going to connect another one the same way we just did, and I'll show you why.
Alrighty. So, I'm going to connect this one. So I got that one connected and I'm just going to spin it. So now I can use this one as a bale. So I should be able to do that like this. I'm hoping it's going to hang correctly, um, but we're going to try it. I'm pretty certain it will. So right here. I'm going to connect to this side and to this side so this is the bottom so it's going to look like this okay so I'm thinking as long as I connect on to the other side with the exact amount of weight which I'm going to do then I should be golden Hi, Mr. Bunton. Mr. Bunton's down here. <laughs> supervising. He's a supervising me. He's informing me his father gave him dry cat food. <laughs> and I'm like, nope, that was me. Because you got wet cat food this morning. All right, so now I should be able to connect on here to the, this side. So I'm on this side, I'm in the bottom, and now I'm on this side. We are good to go with the toggle clasp. So I am going to use some of these smaller toggles because I feel like um, I feel like I just want to. <laughs> That's what I feel like. So I'm gonna put those on. Now I don't know how you guys do toggles, um, but normally what I do is. I put two jump rings. Okay, let me get you down there. I put the um, the male side on this side of the necklace, and I put two jump rings to do that. So I just close this one up. I go with the next one <clears throat> and the reason for this is because uh, this is the side that's going to be going through the part of the toggle and I don't want it to get hung up on any beads or not have enough room uh, be too wide to get through there or anything like that this one's a little that one's a little bit wonky we want a better one We should be good to go. So 
So when I go and I have the two jump rings on there, see I have to pull this through there. And it gives it a little more leeway, especially if you had bigger beads here. So I just, I just like that. That's just a personal preference for me. Zoom you out a little bit. And here we go, guys. Everything is looking spectacular. I like the way it turned out a lot. I really do. I'll get you some video and um, some photos of the finished project. But I mean, all in all, I think it turned out really good. I did forget to use the red painted beads. Um, just because I forgot them. They were sitting around and I forgot them. So I decided not to put those in. I'll just use those on something else. But yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'll get you some photos. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Please subscribe to my videos. Give me a like, comment. Let me know if you've tried this necklace, if you liked it, um, what you've done with your bargain bead box. Just let me know that all the, all the goings-ons. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.